Hey, so I decided that I'm just going to release the plugin that I've been working on uh, for free. Uh, it should be on Git right now. So um, I added a few things to it. Um, now there's an actual attribute system and uh, that's probably one of the, uh, I think, uh, one of the better uh, implementations I have in this plugin. I'll go over it just in a little bit. And I created a Discord for the plugin just um, because it's more convenient that way rather than answering a bunch of comments. So if you want to try out the plugin, you have questions, you should just join the Discord. Um, so this is an extremely basic example. Uh, mainly the reason I've, I'm releasing it now because it, it's not like perfect or anything, not nearly perfect. It's still got glitches, but it's just taking up a lot of my time. I'm still going to be working on it on the side, but I'm going to be focusing on other projects for the time being. Um, I'm going to be making a multiplayer VR game. Uh, and that's what I want to focus my time on. So this is going to sit on the back burner. But this plugin will be used uh, v in a very big way in that. So um, I will be updating it, but just not d directly working on it. So now that it actually has like an attribute system. So I've added effects and attributes. Kind of sounds like the gameplay ability system, but it's a bit different. And I think um, I, I like... Um, my version of it for my purposes like mostly first person shooters are more basic effects it's more simple in my opinion and it's all exposed in blueprints so this right this is just an instant effect it's just applying damage you see i've got a little procedural uh flinching effect and so basically the way that I, uh damage is applied or any kind of attribute change is um so you've got your effect, right? And it it's a class uh, just uh, called attribute effect, and it's actually never instanced. So you can have a bunch of these effects, and they basically all just run on the default object. So they're pretty cheap to use, and the way that it works is the attribute effect, you uh, put in the name of the attribute on the attributes component, uh, let me just quickly bring up how the attributes component works. I, th you know, this this uh, plugin is most likely going to need a tutorial series. I, it's it shouldn't be too complicated, but it just sounds complicated at first. At least I would assume. Um, my folder structure is also really bad as well. Yeah. So this is my character attribute c component. So let me just delete this. This is just for testing. So right now I've just got a health and a movement speed attribute and you can mark these as replicated or whatever if you want. And basically an attribute is nothing more than just a float, but it comes with a few things on it that allows you to use <clears throat> the API easier. So it comes with a handle within it that's automatically set when you declare it onto an attributes component. So if you do get attribute handle, this is the handle and it's basically just a pointer to the attribute but it also has some property information so you can do get name this is the name of the attribute it should just literally say health or you can to string so it's got a bunch of things on there as well and it's also got a delegate so you can bind to the attributes changed and uh yeah so you can actually listen to attribute changes and one other big thing with the attribute is you can um set I think you have to do it through the handle yeah you could set its value and you can pass in a context and it'll actually replicate with it and this is a big issue in a lot of uh, shooters where you're trying to replicate something and the and you're waiting for some property to replicate first before you multicast something like you want to apply a flinching or uh, some kind of something that r runs after um, you apply damage. Uh, so you got your on rep for your health or something, but you can't pass in like uh, uh, a hit result through it as well. Um, so with this, whenever the delegate is called on the client and server, 
it also replicates whatever context you pass through. And the context is, in this case, a polystruct. This is actually sounding kind of complicated, honestly. So sorry about that. So um, it passes in a struct, and you can use that struct, which is uh, basically just the instigator, context, the effect. <clears throat> and with that, you can pass in whatever you want. And the polystruct handle that I made, um, which is basically, hold up. Yeah, so basically a polystruct handle is just an array of uh, polystructs, polymorphic struct. And that and, and a polystruct is basically just, you could pass in any struct. So I could do make vector. And it's basically just an array of whatever you pass in. And it'll net serialize and do it normally as if it was just the struct itself, an array of structs. And so that means with this system, you can basically pass in any context, any whatever you want to do. And you can parse your data however you want. You can uh, do deal your damage however you want. You're probably going to need to create an API over this. Like you're going to want to call a function that just has like hit results, uh, damage, whatever. But and, and you, you wrap it around a function, but internally you can pass in through my API a polystruct and you just uh, stuff your data in there. So um, really quickly, just to show a bit of how effects work, just like I mentioned. So you've got an effect and the way the effect works is you've got your attribute. And so in this case, uh, each modifier is basically an attribute you want to modify and an array of calculations. And the way the calculations work is they're sequential. So, and they all run in the default object. So no instancing here. So basically you've got, uh, in this case, it's just one thing. It's just base damage. It just applies damage. But for more advanced calculations, what you would want to do is you would have like a base damage and then below that, then it would calculate uh, multipliers for like shields or whatever you want. And then you could apply a damage fall off on range and you can just pass in however many contexts you want. And as well, since um, you can do type checking with the polystruct, you can just with the context and I call it a context, but this is just a polystruct handle. You do get any and it'll return whatever, like if it has in this case a transform, it'll say tr true and it'll return the index of that first one that it encounters or false, or you can just do it by index. So get at, you can get the index and it should be safe. It won't ever uh, say success if it's the wrong type. Child structs work as well. So you can in C++ create a subclass or a substruct, I guess, child struct, and it should still work. It should still uh, say success. So it's almost like uh, target data in the game playability system, but you, you can do anything with it in blueprints. There's no need to touch C++ here. So, <clears throat> or and you can literally pass in anything and you don't need to make your own uh, serializer and other things, net serializer. Um, what else do I have? And one other thing with effects is they're kind of like the game in the gameplay ability system. I keep talking about that, but it's pretty similar. You've also got tags that it inherits and I didn't introduce every single kind of tag modification that can occur like because you can create your own damage subclass and you can do whatever you want with that. I don't want to just throw too much at you. You can make your own logic. I don't want to uh, do too much here, but basically, um, yeah, you can apply tags. And the way that I've got this is I've actually created my own gameplay tag structure. It's called an aggregate gameplay tag container. So if I just right here, And the attributes component has uh, one on it, actually. Let me just pull up that one, actually, uh, my character attributes. So if I go to default, 
owned tags. Yeah, so here is the gameplay tag count and this is the gameplay uh, aggregate gameplay tag container. And so this is something that I created as well. Um, it's basically the exact same thing as a gameplay tag container, except it comes with a tag count. And I think this is something extremely useful that I don't know why isn't just in the engine already. But it's basically just you've got an array of gameplay tags, just like you've already got um, uh, in the gameplay tag container, except it comes with a count. So you can so it has a numbered amount of tags. So if I put like let's say I had 10, and by the way, these are really nonsensical tag names, item dot something else, 10 of this, and I compiled, you'll see down here, the aggregate gameplay tag count, and this isn't something you can actually edit, this is just for visualization, you'll see that now it's showing, and I'm actually going to remove that this is visible at all, this shouldn't be, but this is just for demonstration purposes, you'll see now for the aggregate tag count, I've got 10 items dot something else, something else and I've also got 10 items so if I add another thing here and I do something and I do five items dot something then now you'll see I've got in the aggregate tag count you've got 10 item dot something else five item dot something have you got 15 items so overall if you had an inventory system and you just wanted like a certain amount of if you wanted to check something like you've got how many items do I have and you've got like 30 wood some whatever as long the children will aggregate in this array down here and you can see the actual amount of overall items you have but you can also get the exact tag count so you could ask how many uh, like just items dots wood do I have and you could see the actual wood so if I you could actually just add tag, you can add the amount, you can remove. So yeah, there's a bunch of functions that I've created here. You can, ex you can check that out on your own. And you see this plugin, I'm not really, it's really just a conglomerate of just a bunch of random useful features for multiplayer stuff that I've come up with and it's basically just put together loosely and you can do whatever you want with it. And I'm going to actually be splitting it up more and more. So I'm going to make certain things within the plugins, uh, separate plugins, just all combined together. So, uh, you can really pick and choose what you want because for something like a multiplayer game, obviously you don't want like IK arms in this manner. And also, yeah, this uh, also net serializes just fine. All of these you can just put here in the variables tab and just mark it as replicated. And I've created custom serializers for them, so they should work just fine. Uh, I don't think I missed anything. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much what I've got so far. Um, I was going to work on this example project further, but it's really a time drain. So if you want help with something or I, maybe I might release a tutorial series for this someday, uh, yeah, you could check that out and you can message me on Discord if you want. So that's pretty much all for now, I think. So yeah, see ya.